strong sustainability is so important because I see it as a rule number one for any human self unless you look after your body. So what we are what we are aiming for is a concept that is fully aware of our dependence of our physical environment. This goes for you individual individually and it means also collectively that we are utterly depending on the natural environment and its resources. Now this is not a new idea. Uh, in fact, uh, recent uh, historical research, only over the last 10 years or so, has discovered, has discovered a real wealth of information on how civilizations in past periods of history have responded to the challenge of li living halfway in tune with nature. Now, looking for a definition, a definition for strong sustainability is very simple. It's really living within the caring capacity of the natural environment that you are part of. And this has been a rather uh, successful idea or rule number one in most parts of human development, in most cultures, in most societies, including the European context. Something that's easily overlooked in the whole de debate about sustainability, that even in the European context, we have a very strong tradition of sustainability ideas. Uh, for example, the relationship of the people to the land, usually expressed in property rights, was until quite recently perceived to be a relationship of using and care, stewardship for the future. Now this was part, if you like, of the European heritage in countries like England, Germany, and others, um, until about the Enlightenment. And, and I guess we really have our problem of sustainability or unsustainability for the last 200 years because one f this fundamental rule number one has been forgotten. We can closely look at the discussion that occurred around the beginning of the 19th century in England and Germany in particular about the question how an economy can best be organized. The reason why this question came about was that all over Europe we had an environmental crisis, namely the disappearance of forests uh, just a, across uh, Europe. And forests, of course, were the main, in fact, the sole, you could say, the sole base for energy, the source of all energy, driving the economy. And with a, a crisis of disappearing of forests due to overuse, due to you know, building ships and for mining purposes, and so basically the beginning industrial revol revolution caused this crisis. And economists quite interestingly discussed what creates wealth. The traditional view of those economists, leading economists of the time, was crea uh, wealth is created by natural resources, by nature. So we need to protect our natural resource base. And then there were so-called new economists who were saying, look, we have a problem here. Uh, there are no forests anymore. We might have a, a need to look for new sources of energy, like coal. Coal was available in England for 20, 30 years around that time, initially thought of just as an interim solution because it's a fossil fuel. But then the debate among economists uh, went like this. The old sort of school, today we would say environmental economists, were insisting to preserve the natural resource base and plant more trees and really get the uh, cycles of nature uh, going again. Uh, whereas the new economy would say, well, wealth is really created by money. And this is something we are quite used to today. Um, if you say this, however, if you really put an economic value on things like forests or nature, then you commodify these things. And then it becomes a lot, becomes a lot more uh, easy for any economic theory to think of replaceability of one resource base by another. This was opening the door to the age of coal, of oil, and other fossil fuels, one of the key reasons why we have a big problem of unsustainability today. So what we can learn from our uh, more recent history is really two things. Um, sustainability has been with us for a long, long time and has only been uh, sort of discovered most recently in sort of 20, 30 years. Um, as a you know fundamental principle, uh, and number two uh, aspect we, we can learn is that we need to um, be serious about 
our utter dependence on ecological systems. This is a non-negotiable bottom line. And that's what's been referred to as strong sustainability as opposed to weak sustainability, which is a bit more fashionable and which is pretty much what governments and business are, at least on paper, subscribing to, basically saying that the environment is important, but so is the economy and so is society at large. That's all very well, but the bottom line really is you must never threaten the maintenance or the, the continuation of the ecological system that all resources come from. Uh, you can capture this in just one notion, saying strong sustainability is preserving the ecological integrity of the natural world of individual systems that we are surrounded, surrounded by. Start the debate and discussion now about economic alternatives. Stop accepting that the way we live now is something we cannot change, because we can.